Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Plain Not Jane. I am Plain Not Jane, and you, my friend, have tuned into this week's seven. This week's seven is a video series highlighting lessons learned and observations made in my life over the last seven days. And this week's seven starts now. Number one. We don't realize how difficult it can be to navigate the world with a child that's not like everybody else until it's your child that's not like everybody else. I've mentioned this before that my son, Young Mountain, has a speech delay. So for us, when we're walking through a store and people see this cute little guy with all this curly hair and they say hi, he doesn't speak back. And it's not that, and it's not that he doesn't want to tell you hi, it's that he can't. It's not that he doesn't want to tell you how he's doing when you ask him, he can't. Now I will admit that sometimes he doesn't want to talk to people, <laughs> that's personality. But a lot of the times he doesn't say anything because he he actually can't respond. He he it, it he has trouble responding. And experiencing that um, has really opened my eyes to what other families could be dealing with. It, I've, it just seems like we're so quick as, as a society of humans, we're so quick to judge and to label families without actually understanding what they're dealing with. If you see a kid having a tantrum, most people automatically assume Oh, the kid is just spoiled. Mom and dad need to teach the kids some discipline. It seldom occurs to people that this baby's having a tantrum because they have a communications issue or they're experiencing some sensory overload. Those types of things don't really occur to people until you're, we're one of those families that is actually affected. And so I say all that to say this, before you judge a parent's parenting, or before you label a kid that you don't even know as spoiled or undisciplined, try, try to be understanding, try to be a little empathetic and just check your own judgments and, and, and just try to offer a little more understanding and a little less judgment. Number two, there are 44 days until Christmas. Number three, I am now realizing that things are going to change big time when I go back to work. And it'll be more than just going to work and not being at home with the kids all day, but little stuff like going to the bathroom. <laughs> like I'm accustomed to just going to the bathroom whenever it hits me, but if I'm back at work, as a teacher, that won't necessarily be the case. Like, I'll have to reset my GI clock. Stuff like wearing pants. I don't put on real pants every day. So that'll be new for me. And I don't know, having to be somewhere at a certain time, regardless. Like, I pretty much, you know, come and go as I please now. And when you have a job, you kind of have to be there on time. So I'm... I'm starting to now wrap my head around those changes and start actually preparing for those changes. I do look forward to going back to work. I am really, really excited just at the thought of being in a classroom and being a teacher again. Like I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Like I really miss teaching, but I also know that going back to work after being at home for a couple of years will be an adjustment. So I'm trying to start adjusting now. Number four, I will not let the garage get out of control again. Our garage was, for lack of a better phrase, a hot, stinking, sawdust-covered mess. There were wood scraps and dust and acrylic mirror and boxes and firewood and furniture and pallets and car parts and just it, it was just all kinds of stuff in that garage and 
None of it, well some of it was, but for the most part it was unorganized. It was just a mess. Um, so Saturday, this past Saturday, um, we were expecting to get some firewood delivered and we were like, okay, we cannot put the firewood in here because one, we can't get in here and two, this is just a mess. So we cleaned up the garage, we swept and we vacuumed organized and we swept and we vacuumed and organized we threw away stuff we burned stuff and after what three hours yeah after about three hours of work the garage finally looks like a garage that belongs to normal people and not a garage that belongs to orders that are unchecked so after spending that time to clean up the garage I have made a promise to myself that I will do my part to not let the garage get in that type of shape again. Number five. We are all just realizing how fluffy Young Mountain was when he was a baby. Now, I knew that he was a healthy baby. You know, I mean, he was pretty rotund. But now, when we look back at pictures of him, we are all like, wow. That was a big baby. Now he has thinned out a little bit, but he is still a pretty solid kid. <laughs> and now he doesn't quite look like the same snuggly butterball turkey he used to be. <laughs> Number six. I'm ready for Young Mountain to start preschool, but I'm not ready for him to be away from me all day. We've been working to find a, a suitable preschool for him. Uh, we found one. He's on the waiting list. We're just waiting for an opening to come up. Um, and I'm excited about him going to school. I'm excited about him being able to have kids his own age to play with. And I'm really looking forward to I'm really looking forward to him getting that experience in a school setting. But at the same time, I am not looking forward to my baby boy being away from me all day. Like I've already started trying to figure out what my days will look like with just one toddler at home. Right now, my days consist of primarily catering to the two of them, you know, feeding them, which is an all day task because they graze all day. You know, avoiding messes, cleaning up messes, chasing kids, changing diapers, taking this one to the potty, changing pull-ups, uh, just, you know, just the two of them. I'm, I've, my day, you know, revolves around the two of them. And I've even started telling my husband, I have no idea what Honey Badger and I are going to do when it's just the two of us at home and Young Mountain is at school. But the way it looks, I'm going to figure out that new reality sooner than later. <laughs> Wish me luck. And finally, number seven. I am excited about hosting a bonfire. All right, that's been this week's seven. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a good old thumbs up. And if you didn't, keep on going and don't come back. Also, make sure you click below to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this week's seven cooking videos, DIY projects, and good old family foolery. So until next time, go where you're celebrated, not just tolerated. Be safe. Bye-bye.